In the center of attention is Amari Katsi. We have uh, Michael Gurjan here, filmmaker and actor, and his relative, mm -hmm. uh, third cousin, Father Vazgen Movsesian. Wow. Uh, <laughs> 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 well, Father Vazgen brought uh, Mar Michael's movie here in the, at the Western Isis. We watched it here during the Reclaim yeah, conference. Right, yeah. And uh, the movie was, for me personally, I was telling this to Michael and uh, Father Vazgen yesterday, that this is in my top five movies in my personal, uh, you know, uh, collection of movies, w which is very, very close to me. Uh, I lived in Armenia. I'm somehow, uh, you know, related to the Soviet culture. I grew up in it. And um, my parents knew what, what it is to, and my grandparents, they, they, uh, they've told me what the, what the Soviet um power is and how could they you know silence people and about repatriation mm -hmm. uh, and this movie very masterfully you know shows that in a you know in a dramatic way in a fun way but most of all it's like very very uh deep and it's just a beautiful story about about uh the americazi the guy who comes to armenia um so what, without uh, further ado, um, Michael, welcome. Thank and you. Father Vaskin, uh, thank you for coming. This is uh, very important for me personally because I think that the movie deserves as much publicity as possible, uh, especially for the Armenian uh, viewership. We need to see the movie to learn about these uh, things that happened during that period. But also uh, we need to see that what kind of quality movies are possible to make mm. and uh, to support the filmmakers like you and especially you, you know, uh, to make them more. Uh, I'm sure you have a few things coming up <laughs> in maybe in, in plans. So, but be, before um, we get to that, just tell us, Michael, how did you come up with the story? What happened? Uh, how did all this start? I think being Armenian and being in uh, the arts or filmmaking in particular, I've always felt a, uh, I'm going to say an, an, a need, but also the pressure uh, to, to do something connected to my roots. Um, and, you know, especially with film, most of what's out there and been done has focused on the genocide, which... Um, is incredibly important, and mm -hmm. and I think still needs more uh, more films to to explore that. But it, that's an aspect of who we are. It's mm -hmm. not all of of what we are. Um, and so for me, it took it took a while. To, I, I I spent a long time trying to figure out what I could do, uh, both as an artist, but as an Armenian, to contribute and really help. Um, who we are uh, and the country itself. And so to, I guess starting with just trying to find something I could shoot there. Mm -hmm. um, making films about Armenians is wonderful, but to shoot in Armenia, it was a way both to bring um, you know, money to the country, uh, industry, help uh, build the industry there. I mean, you were saying before, it's hard to find good films coming out of Armenia. Yeah. And it's not their fault, you know, um, after the Soviet Union, Union collapsed, the infrastructure for filmmaking didn't exist. Mm. Um, so by making a project there, and um, I, this is kind of in, in uh, uh, the theme of the film in a way, is about bringing Armenians together, working together. Yeah. And with this, it's a, an Armenian from the diaspora going there and... Um, that's kind of what we did too. Mm -hmm. Some uh, Armenians from the diaspora going there and working with Armenians in Hayastan and um, collaborating to create something that uh, I think we're all very proud of. Um, so, I, you know, there was a lot of things kind of woven together in terms of how the film developed, um, how the story developed. Mm -hmm. But... Um, 
yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's been a long journey. I, I'm sure you know we shot this in 2020. Yeah, during which COVID. Was, yeah. I was going to ask about that. Yeah. Um, uh, so how, how, how did you manage all this, especially... Armenia was really hardly hit by COVID and they were strict, you know, about coming out. They had, I think, certain hours you could go out, you had to have papers. So how did you manage all that? <laughs> yeah, they had, they had, uh, at first, I didn't even know what it said because I can't read Armenian, yeah. but it was some paper that I had to sign every week. And if I would go out of the apartment, I'd have to have it with me. Oh. And, but... I would go out jogging, and I'd have it in my pocket, and I would see some cops, and I would just go to the other side of the street. <laughs> they didn't care. They were <laughs> um, but yeah, it was it was um, it was uh, really wild. Um, we had to lock down. We had shot probably about a week's worth of the film, uh -huh. um, and then we were told, "Okay, you have to stop. Everybody has to quarantine." Um, there's a short period of time where I could have come back, uh -huh. um, but I ended up staying, and then the travel ban kicked in. Mm. Um, so yeah, it was it was it was everything you guys experienced here, but with a little extra Armenianness yeah. to it. <laughs> I, I can imagine with, with all the production. By the way, production uh, crew, did you have them hired in Armenia, or you had people from here? Mm. How did that work out? Yeah, we had, um, I would say, 90% of the cast and crew was all based in, in Armenia. Wow. Um, there was my cinematographer, um, uh, Hassem Ibrahimian. He's Persian, Iranian, but with Armenian roots. He came, um, a few actors, um, myself, and that was pretty much it. Everybody mm -hmm. else was based there. So the story is about an American guy who decides to repatriate to go back to Armenia during uh, this, the big wave of repatriated, or, or how would you call it? I well, it, it was also the uh, beginning of the Cold War, yeah. Um, yeah. right yeah. after World War II. And, and um, we know that a lot of people came from Middle East. Yeah, but, repatriation too. But yeah. in the beginning of the movie, it says that, you know, 400 and something. I think some, 300 and something and came, from the, came from, from the US. United States. Yeah, and it's incredible. Much. It's, um, I, I didn't, I didn't know that there's, there was also, you know, a group of people that came from yeah. America. And so the story is about one of those. Yeah. There, do you remember, I gave you the script to read yeah. uh, before I, I made it. And I was like, I, I was very nervous showing it to you. I was like, I was, I I was just know. amazed that somebody had um, actually done the research on because it's a part of our history that no one ever talks about. Mm -hmm. Like you said earlier, we get so uh, bogged down with the genocide, and rightly so, but there is a life after that. And this was a very important time that the Soviet system was attracting people, bringing people there. Mm -hmm. On these lies, you know, you come, we're going to give you everything, and they were getting over there, and under Stalin, they were, you know, being shipped off to Siberia, yeah. and you did an incredible job. I remember the original script. I'm going, wow, finally! And then when I saw it up on the screen, wow, yeah, it's it, it's it's. I, you know, I got a. I, I recently saw a comment on social media about in reaction to the trailer, and somebody saying, well, why would anybody ever go to? Uh, Stalin's uh, USSR, like that would be like going to North Korea now. And I wanted to write back, like, dude, <laughs> nobody knew. Yeah, nobody exactly. knew. Nobody we, knew. Hindsight's twenty twenty. You know, no one really knew what was happening over there. Yeah. And um, have you seen any of the propaganda that went out? I, I saw it. my grandmother had uh, some of it because she was offered an opportunity. She was in America at that time, but her sisters were going repatriating from um, from Greece. Mm -hmm. They were all in Greece, her sisters and her brother, and they were uh, repatriating. And she was very close to moving there, mm. but her sister wrote her. Yeah. And in code, you know, like, don't come because you're going to be just like Sarkis is. And, well, Sarkis is dead, you know. And right. So like, <laughs> we figured it out, you know. And I remember that specifically, seeing those uh, letters and those things. It, it's, it was, she had them, and she spoke about them, that we were this close to repatriating ourselves from yeah. America. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. You were for a period of time in your life where 
the America say as well, right? When you went to Armenia as a yeah. student to a seminary. I was the America I, I know there were some stories, you know, the KGB following you and stuff. I, I, I You've heard those, huh? Yeah, <laughs> from you, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but they didn't make a movie about it. Are, yeah. there, are there any, uh, you know, what do you call uh, parallels in, in the story? I, I'm not, I, we'll see that this Amerikazi gets into a lot of problems. I think what know. Michael's done with this movie is really kind of like gotten into a period of, of our history that is like none other. Even when I went, I was in the, there in the 70s. Mm -hmm. um, yes, very Soviet time, but nothing like what they experienced um, yeah. uh, during the repatriati repatriation. What was it, 1946 mm -hmm. through mm -hmm. 48? Yeah, I think... Um, I don't know when it started in Europe and Syria. I think around 46, probably. And late your, 46. your movie ends with um, with Stalin. Well, I don't want to give away everything, yeah. but I mean, that was that moment, the way you record that and present that, the relief in the people. You know, oh, yeah. That, that's, that's wild. Yeah. Well, and, the, we, it gets to where the, um, the point when Stalin dies mm -hmm, in, mm -hmm. in the story. And I have to tell you, in Armenia, the I've been to maybe uh, two or three screenings there, and the audience applauds. Mm -hmm. when, yeah, when that they moment, announce, when, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. But it's anyways, uh, the story. There's this uh, interesting. I don't know how to say this without any spoilers, mm -hmm. but uh, it, there is the relationship of uh, Amerikatsi with 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 the people that he's staying with. If I can say, I, will, I would just say that the you mean uh, so a big part of the story. Yeah, um, it's not just yeah, let's, about uh, repatriation. Yeah. It's it's really, um, and this is one of our goals too. Mm -hmm. Inside this period of uh, history, we've created a story that is completely fictional, but about a prisoner who um, can see through his from his prison cell. He can see into an apartment building. Mm -hmm. where there's another man living there. And um, he ends up sort of over the years vicariously surviving, just watching this other person's life. And, um, you know, I had one person tell me, you know what your film's about? It's about a man in prison who's, we realize, is more free than the people outside of prison. Wow. Yeah. And uh, at its core, it is a story about survival and mm -hmm. um, about finding a way to continue. And I think you, I remember a, 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 maybe a sermon you gave, you said this at one point, it really struck me, is Armenians kind of, we have that to teach to the world. We have mm -hmm. that, you know, that's something we have done. And uh, sharing that is kind of at the heart of what the film is. Um, which is, to me, a universal story. Mm -hmm. um, I think oftentimes with Armenian films and art, it can be a bit insular, and we tried our best to create a story that could easily connect with non-Armenians mm -hmm. as much as Armenians. And so that's at the, the sort of center of the film is this universal tale about what it means to find a way to just keep going and survive and as charlie uh in the film says um his grandmother tells him you never let go of your smile yeah so that 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 part was striking as well when he keeps remembering this uh the song from his uh, grandmother that she used to sing and the connection with with her like throughout the movie and how it helped him to you know maintain himself as as the human being, as as the guy, the simple, happy guy that comes with hopes, you know, and uh, you know all this positive attitude, and he goes through things like unimaginable things, you know, the the way they treat him, you show how bad a human being can be, and at the same time, how they can change from being bad uh, in in the prison, the people who treat him. If this is not a spoiler, we can cut it later. <laughs> no, I think that's fine. Yeah. That's intriguing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's amazing. He's the eternal optimist. Though. I just <laughs> yeah, love that. Yeah. There was nothing that could bring this guy down when there was so much to bring him down. I, is it? 
fascinating um, story of human nature, I think. Um, and it happens to be Armenian, you know, but I think that's where it transcends the Armenian, that human nature is, you can see that in everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah. He happens to be Armenian, this guy, and takes place in Armenia. The, the, there is this uh, part in the movie where uh, you bring up, I, I mean, this is, we're in the church, we have a priest with us, so I want to ask about that as well. Uh. Uh, when you bring up uh, uh, the priest in the movie, was this intentional? Did you have something in mind? If you can tell us about that. Yeah, I mean, this is this is like a almost an Easter egg, as they yeah. say. <laughs> um, most people won't even catch it. Um, so as he's watching uh, this man's life, there's a point where a bunch of people are coming over, and it seems like, oh, is this like a dinner or something? Mm-hmm. And then a man comes in who's wearing black, um, but it doesn't have a collar, and he looks around and then he, point, he sees the windows and he says, oh, you close these, and they close the curtains. Mm-hmm. So, and then later they open them up and people are... Uh, so what I learned is that um, in this period, um, because religion was um, anti, or was against, Soviet Union said, no, religion, you're not, they, they yeah, did a lot to... It was anti-scientific uh, and yeah. they, they even had like a specific propaganda part yeah. against the religion and the Armenian church. Yeah, so right. what the Armenians did is a lot of them had church in uh, hiding in, in their apartments mm-hmm. uh, so nobody would see and, and even the way that was done, I learned from the people there, um, Armenians who worked on the film, I remember I was, when we were setting up the scene, I was like, oh, okay, well, there has to be like a place where, they're like, no, 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 that's not how it was done. It was, it was just looked like dinner. It was a dinner table, mm-hmm. you know, food and everything. And, and that's how it was set up. That's how they would have um, mm-hmm. their service. So where, okay, let me ask about the, the other Easter uh, <laughs> eggs, if there are any. <laughs> there's you lots. Know, if there's you can tell a lot us a co- yeah. couple yeah. of them, you know, so people can, you know, make maybe when they watch, look for these. Yeah. Uh, oh, are, are there, there any? Are there, oh, yeah, I'm sure. Um, uh, gosh. Um, well, there are certain things in it that I think, I, I've always loved layered art. Um, mm-hmm. And I guess what that means is, you know, there's a version of the film that exists the first time you see it. Yeah. And I think that is a very strong and and a good, it's a, it's a good film in that regard. But the more you see it, the more there are details of things that you don't necessarily are going to get the first time around. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Details about characters that, um, uh, for instance, the um, guard, the person in the apartment that he's watching why he's arrested you kind of find that out at the end Mm -hmm. what what he or what he's been he's been um sanctioned by the or censured by um, the communist party and um it's you at the end it's kind of told why but if you when you see the film from the beginning and you know why the relationship he has with his wife Mm -hmm. and why they're arguing you you see more of of what that is about so, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. I was just I was going to ask you, uh, where did you the the communist uh, environment you created? Is that the right word for it? I mm-hmm. mean, the you walk into that room, and that's a communist room. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's it's strange, but when I walk, when the camera went in there, I go, oh yeah, that's yeah, that's what we had. I mean, it was remarkable how you found these um, these places. There's this- smoking lady the smokers there. yeah oh, it was yeah. everybody was i mean they still do over there but i mean it's like uh, over there yeah you just captured that so well oh well, thank you yeah was, uh, you have to know the soviet union to understand that that those scenes and yeah. and you captured you knew yeah. it yeah well i i credit the the team that i had mm-hmm. i mean um and i i mean i credit myself for being able to listen and and be open to everybody I worked with I said please you know more than mm-hmm. I do help me help help us create this environment as best as possible there is a movie I'm, I'm maybe, you've seen it maybe uh, it's called Chernobyl mm-hmm. uh, on HBO yeah yeah the way they recreated this rooms the you know wallpapers and 
the every single detail in that movie unbelievable i when i was watching it i felt like i'm back at my school mm-hmm. back in armenia you know so incredible yeah. and when i was watching this movie i felt similar ways Same. like you know the prison environment the apartment up there you know the streets the mm-hmm. people what they were wearing it felt so in this case, you know, in such such warmth coming out of there, even though it wasn't like portraying good conditions of of, of Charlie, but yeah. nevertheless, it was incredible. Um, also, I want to ask about the location. Where was the shot? I, I, it was in Armenia, but where specifically? Um, we used locations um, in Gumri, um, Ashtarak. Um, a few other places, and then also uh, near Yerevan, there's uh, the high studios, which are just outside of Yerevan, um, which were actually quite nice uh, studios during the Soviet days, and then they kind of went downhill. Mm. Um, We put a new roof on one of the sound stages. Oh, nice. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, And, uh, yeah, a few other locations around, but mostly it was Gumri and and, um, Ashtarak. Yeah. Well, with the with the sound stage and all that, some technical thing. You are the actor and you're directing it at the same time. How? What's the logistics involved in that? Like you're you're on in front of the camera and you're behind the camera. Did you yell at yourself? Yeah. Like, hey, <laughs> act better. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. Um, well, I guess a couple of things. One, I I started directing mostly because I like acting. I like um, I like acting myself, but I also like working with actors. Um, and I, it's not that different for me when I'm directing other people and when I'm working on something with someone else. Mm. So if I'm trying to help you guys in a scene mm. and how I would be working with you to try to get a good performances and get the... Or if it was just me and you working together, mm. it's kind of the same. It's not that different. Um, but then in the film, there's a lot of stuff where I'm on my own, uh, so I'm not working with yeah. anybody. And there, then it really kind of turns into me and um, the cinematographer uh, or the first AD, uh, assistant director, or even the cameraman. I think a lot for this film, mm-hmm. there's a lot of the film which is just me sitting in a, in a, a prison cell yeah. window, looking at a window. And... Um, the first AC uh, assistant camera is the was the camera operator. You know, he was like this far away from me all the time, mm. and I used him. Um, <laughs> I mean, we we were friends, and I. It's just, I mean, you. It's, uh, I don't know, just collaborating with someone and trying to find something. It doesn't. Uh, it's not like. I think we think of directors as being these guys that have a, you know, a scarf and he's looking going, <laughs> action! Yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, what's direction? It's, it's, um, it's really just trying to find something with... Uh, with uh, direction's a lot of things. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, there's a lot of directors that don't even care about actors. They're looking, you know, swinging around with cameras doing weird stuff. Um, but in terms of acting, it's really just trying to discover a, a performance, trying to discover what's right. And um, I find when I was acting before I started directing, I remember a lot of times I would know if if some, a take was good, not from the director or the writers or anything, it would be the crew guys. Oh, yeah. I would notice, like, if the crew guys were, like, watching into it, then I was, okay, it's good. Okay. So. But, by the way, I introduced Michael as a filmmaker and actor, but Michael is also the producer, the director of the movie, uh, and the writer. Yeah. Uh, and the editor. Editor, editor of the yeah. movie. Yeah. But the question with the writer is, like, you talked a little in the beginning, but what was the inspiration? You said that, you know, certain things about the... You know, mainly we uh, make movies about genocide and stuff. But yeah, what was the specific inspiration? Um, well, I, I think it was a convergence of a few things. Um, I had spent uh, prior to making this film, I had spent quite a few years trying to make another film here in the U.S. And I don't know something. It's somewhat the climate of uh, Hollywood 
it's very hard to make independent films mm -hmm. um, unless they fit into a certain sort of genre. Um, and if you're not part of that, then it's, I, I just found it very difficult to get funding, mm -hmm. get anybody interested. So um, I was looking for something. What, how can I make a film that I care about, that I uh, can put my heart into? And so a couple things happened. One is I had heard a story f uh, from a Ukrainian friend of mine about someone he knew who was in prison who could see into an apartment building outside the prison and for 10 years or so mm -hmm. just watched this guy's life and sort of survived by living vicariously through this other person. So that story always stuck uh, stuck with me and mm -hmm. I thought you know someday somehow there's a way to use that. And then I think the second thing was the um the revolution in Armenia. Mm -hmm. In uh, 2018, I think, like many other Armenians, I was watching what was going on. I was inspired by, I was seeing, you know, wow, mm -hmm. wow something's happening Changes there. Mm -hmm. And from that, I remember, well, I think I had just stumbled upon an article about, it was an article titled something about uh, Akbar something or other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was about uh, repatriation. I think it was repatriation in the 90s. It was some event that had taken place. But from that, I started to learn more about, oh, there have been these different waves of repatriation mm -hmm. um, after World War I, um, after World War II, in the 60s, 70s, 90s. Um, but this period after World War II, um, uh, learning about it and what Stalin did, and mm -hmm. I was like, wow, this is really, really wild. Um, but I saw a parallel kind of with what was happening in 2018, 2019 of this resurgence, at least before the war, of Armenians going, ah, mm -hmm. let's go back. Let's create yeah. businesses. Let's go revitalize the country. Let's, you know, a similar thing was happening. Yeah. Um, so those were the things that kind of sparked me going, oh, I started writing um, a story and I, I have to say this is probably the fastest script I've ever written oh. um, I mean I have scripts that I've been working on for 30 years <laughs> um, but this was I think I think maybe three four months mm -hmm. it was uh, I feel blessed for it it was kind of a gift I think one more thing about uh, I guess it's a again technical solution you had there you know when when he's looking out and you had to direct a movie through the window. Mm -hmm. Is that how you would describe? How a did movie you within a movie. Yeah, well, it's, it's actually yeah, more. It of, it's like almost that. like a play within a movie. Yeah, a little. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Well, I we shot all of the apartment stuff mm -hmm. first, most all of it, but then COVID happened, mm. and so um, it was a little complicated. But yeah, I, most of that we did. And then I actually, when we were shooting me, I was watching actually the scenes. The footage, that we shot. yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's I'm, I, I don't trust myself enough as an actor to kind of imagine. I was like, yeah. no, let me just watch it for real. <laughs> so um, a lot of my reactions are just real the reactions. reactions yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's so cool. Uh, thank you, Michael. Thank you, Ted Valskin. Oh, uh, yeah. Thank you for this, having me. Uh, this thing. The incredible movie is coming out on September seventh. Yeah, so September sixth is the premiere. Premiere, uh, which, premiere in Alex Theater at the Alex Theater. Yeah, on September sixth, it's going to be a big event. Um, tickets are going fast, so you, if you want to come, please get your tickets now. Um, it's a big gala event with uh, red carpet and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. So, so any of the actors are, are going to be? Yeah, there? actually, yeah, you know, awesome. uh, Hovik Kushkarian, who mm -hmm. plays Tigran, the guy in the apartment, he's flying out oh, from Spain. Awesome. He's going to be there. Uh, Serge will be there, one of our executive producers, Serge Tankian. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people are going to be there. Um, so that's on the 6th. Mm -hmm. And then the film opens in the in L.A., New York on the 7th. Um, here in Los Angeles, it will be at the um, Americana uh, AMC mm -hmm. brand. Um, it starts on the 7th and um, will run as long as, it, as we can keep it there. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah. And uh, how do they uh, get the tickets? What's the best way to... Best way for both is just to go to americazzi.film. Uh -huh. That's our website, and it has information on the premiere and the theatrical run. Um, the premiere can also, you can get tickets at Ticket Make It. Um, but for the run, uh, our website's the best because it has on there, um, you can get tickets to wherever you are. Yeah, uh, Los Angeles. Los Angeles, yeah. but it, uh, after New York, it's going to open in probably 20 more cities, oh, wow. and then it will go from there. But all of that can be found on the website. It's important that people support it at the theater level mm -hmm. because yeah. those numbers are what yeah what, what's important yeah the better we do at um each weekend it it that's how theaters work is mm -hmm. uh they look at the box office and they go oh wow this film's doing good well let's keep it another week let's keep mm -hmm. it another week mm -hmm. but also nationally if it does well here in glendale then there will be theaters in other They'll parts of the up, country yeah. that will say oh we want it too so mm -hmm. let's make this point really clear this mm -hmm. is the opportunity to take your whole family like every this is like not only the kids but you know call up aunts and uncles and on the weekend just go hey we're gonna go to a film mm -hmm. and i will guarantee you it is like one of the best films that you don't have to be embarrassed because your kids are there or anything like that it's a fantastic film and at the end of it you learn who you are as an Armenian, you learn what Armenia has been through, but you understand what humanity is about. Uh, Anything better than that? So that <laughs> I want to, I want to, I want to do that. <laughs> so I would, I would beg, borrow, steal, whatever it takes to get the money. Go and support it, and in doing that, you're going to be uh, increasing those numbers. And that's unsolicited. <laughs> it's not because we're related or <laughs> yeah, anything yeah, it's like nothing that. like no, that. No. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I have Thank nothing you. to say. Uh, this is it. No, <laughs> you, you tell me if, if you go no, see absolutely. it and you're not happy with it, it's, it's impossible. Yeah. Money back know. guarantee. Yeah, yeah. Just Don't contact say that. it. Yeah. Don't <laughs> but no, our and, people will do that. And not just Armenians, bring your non Armenian yes. friends because we yes. purposely try to make a film that is easy to share with non Armenians. You don't have. I, we've won uh, film festivals in the middle of like the Midwest, yeah. mm. in France, in in Scotland, where there's not a single Armenian in the audience, and they love the film. So uh, please, part of why we made this is so you have something you can share, uh, something of your culture you can share with others. And most importantly, when we have the success, and I'm sure we will have, um, we're going to ask Michael to shoot more movies yes. you know, in that style, in that uh, <laughs> genre or whatever. But a masterful, masterful movie. Thank you. Uh, this was awesome, the conversation. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Michael, for the beautiful movie. Uh, it's coming from my heart. And Ted Wagen, thank you for introducing thank Michael you. to us and yeah. coming to uh, have a conversation about this. Thanks, thanks for Mike. watching and see you soon.